Welcome to the St. Chad's Easter Sunday service. We begin our service with a great declaration, He is risen! It's a wonderful truth that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and we celebrate that today. Easter Sunday we usually have baptisms and I do the service uh, in shorts and t-shirt. So for familiarity I thought I'd put them on for this intro today, although I don't normally have my dog with me. Today's service is a celebration. We're going to begin with a wonderful song of praise, Oh Happy Day, which Ben has recorded for us to join in together. So let's worship God and sing Oh Happy Day together. Good morning. It is great to be with you today. And as we continue in worship now, I just want to encourage you um, as we praise, as we sing songs together, um, to remind you really that uh, praise is a, a powerful weapon and a gift to us, especially in this time, to lift our gaze above our feelings above our thoughts, above the strange times that we're in now. Um, So let's lift our eyes above uh, to the one who is worthy and above all. Greatest day in history Rescue me, say it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive, and oh, happy day, happy day. Wash my sin away, oh happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, forever I am changed. When I stand in that place, free at last, meeting face to face, I'm yours, Jesus, you joy, perfect peace, earthly pain, finally we'll see, celebrate, Jesus is alive, he's alive, and oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed And oh, what a glorious day What a glorious way That you have saved me And oh, what a glorious name What a glorious name Jesus, and oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, forever I am changed. to pray for our time this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all you've done. We thank you that even though we are physically separated, we are together by your Holy Spirit. Lord, speak to us today. Cause the joy of today to rise up in each one of us. Amen. So we're going to start this morning with a quiz. There's two things about Easter that we um, always think about and talk about and involve. And both of them are in this. One is a rabbit and one is chocolate. So I've got a little quiz for you to do in your homes together. The first one is going to be um, identifying eight rabbits. 
So you'll get on your screen a pic the pictures of eight rabbits and I want you to try and name as many as you can in the two minutes to come. So I'll count you down. Ready, steady, go. So how did you do? Did you get them all? Okay, I'm going to tell you who they are before we move on to our next part. We had the White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland, Thumper from Bambi, my favourite Bugs Bunny, the Rabbit or Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh, and then we have Peter Rabbit, the Duracell Bunny, Miffy, which I'm not really aware of, and Buster Baxter, which was a one that my, my boys used to enjoy watching when they were younger. So how did you do? Keep your scores because we're going to um, be able to share those on Facebook Live later. So our next round is the chocolate round. And the picture will come up with four different types of chocolate bars. And you're only going to get one minute on this one. So ready, steady, go. So I think that one was a little bit harder. That's out of our game logo that we're playing quite a lot in this last few weeks. So your answers are A, Crunchy, Whisper, Double Decker and Picnic. So what's your favourite? So add your two scores together, your bunnies, your rabbits and your chocolate. And then let us know later on Facebook Live what your score was. So I hope you've enjoyed our little quiz. Just a little bit of fun to start our morning off together. We've now got a wonderful uh, video from a friend of mine, Phil Knox, who works for the Evangelical Alliance. And he's a great communicator and it's a very visual um, video of the Easter story. So I hope you enjoy this. It's finished. It's over. There's more of them than us and they look a lot bigger. The villain's got the girl and his fingers on the trigger. Voldemort, Sauron and Vader reign. It's gone to penalties against the Germans again. It's a terrible feeling when hope is erased, faith misplaced, virtue defaced, gloom embraced, reputation replaced with the taste of disgrace. When you've pushed every door and it's been slammed in your face, when you realise you're third, in a two horse race. So come sit with me on Golgotha's slopes. See human history at its lowest ebb. See the forces of goodness and grace on the ropes. Evil had spoken, last rites read. In a phony gown and thorny crown, he's mocked and knocked and shamed. As he staggers down through an angry town, they spit and hit and hate. Hands that forged galaxies and flung starry trails are pierced and punctured by merciless nails. His body succumbing to brutal infliction. These are the horrors of crucifixion. And as dice are tossed, hope is lost. Desolate disciples count the cost. King of the Jews, his headrest embossed. A criminal's killing on Calvary's cross. And as last words cut through foul-smelling air, the whole of the cosmos cries out in despair. It is finished. It's over. But then dawn breaks on Easter day. Darkness quakes as shadows give way to the light. See, resurrection's the plan, it's why God sent him. And the comeback's on, there's a change of momentum. The powers of damnation in previous jubilation have been hushed and crushed by the Lord of creation. See, he takes the hit, stands where we should have stood, and that's why we call Friday good. And he's back with life and with us and blessed. And that's why we can know it as Sunday best. So to the four nil down, to the backs against the wall, Listen to his rallying resurgent call. 
and to those up against it in brokenness and pain. Easter's story roars, we go again. So thine be the glory, death's lost its sting. Here's to Jesus, the comeback king. And so we're going to come to a time of worship together in your homes. Um, it may be that you want to just pause this video at this point and it may be that you want to go and use one of our playlists of worship tracks. Um, or it may be that there are other worship songs or other ways of worshipping that you want to engage in as a family or on your own or wherever you may be now in your home. And we're just going to come to a time of worship. So let me pray and then we'll worship together. Dear Lord, we thank you that you are with us, that you are good. We worship you, we glorify you, we praise your name, we fix our eyes on you. Holy Spirit, would you come, would you inhabit our praises. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Our first reading is from Luke 24, beginning at verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood before them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners, to be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven. And to all the others, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. The Bible captures the amazement and the wonder of those first witnesses to the fact that Jesus had risen from the dead. In our reading from Luke's Gospel, it describes the women, how they went to the tomb early in the morning and Jesus wasn't there. The stone had been rolled away. They'd seen him crucified, they knew he'd gone there and the body was gone. And in the story it captures the emotions, they're perplexed, they're, they're afraid when they see that there's, the angels are there. They're confused, how could this happen? The angels remind them of the prophecies that Jesus had promised this would happen. They go back and, and the others are cynical and don't believe. How can this be? But Peter runs to the tomb to find out if it's real. The emotions capture the reality that this moment has caught everything. It made everything different. It's the first day of the week and they realise it. And in Luke's Gospel, he finishes the story of the resurrection the same way he tells the story of Jesus' birth. The Mary, we have a, the same Mary in both, Jesus' mother, she meets an angel and she's perplexed and yet full of faith. And then we have the shepherds of the birth story and here we have Peter and the others who go home and marvelled at what they had seen. Why does Luke tell it this way? He tells it this way because he wants to draw us as the reader into this story and say, I want you to marvel at what you have seen. I want you to hear the news of Jesus and be amazed because people don't rise from the dead and yet he did. And the evidence is so solid and certain and so many have searched into it. There is no other explanation other than that this man who died was put in a tomb, was guarded rose again and over 500 people saw him. On Easter Sunday usually we would now be celebrating baptisms, full immersions, people reaffirming their vows or making their baptism vows for the first time. These are wonderful occasions and it's painful not to be doing them today. 
But every year, the reason I love the Easter Sunday, as well as the informality and the water, and I get to do church in my shorts, it's the stories of people who've encountered Jesus and their lives will never be the same again. Over 2,000 years, billions of people have encountered Jesus, the risen Jesus, and their life is never the same. One word has filled our screens over recent weeks, the word unprecedented. We're almost playing unprecedented bingo in our house. Every time a news briefing uses that word, someone gets a point. The resurrection of Jesus Christ was unprecedented. Nothing like it before. A world-changing moment. And so, all these years, God's people have been trying to understand that moment and put it into language. And Paul a follower of Jesus, whose life was turned around when he encountered the risen Jesus on the road to Damascus, tries to explain it to the followers. Kate's going to read a passage from Paul's letter to the Romans now. God's spirit beckons. There are things to do and places to go. This resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expectant, greeting God with a childlike, what's next, Papa? God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. We know who he is and we know who we are, father and children. And we know we're going to get what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance. We go through exactly what Christ goes through. If we go through the hard times with him, then we're certainly going to go through the good times with him. That's why I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. The created world itself can hardly wait for what's coming next. Everything in creation is being more or less held back. God reigns it in until both creation and all the creatures are ready and can be released at the same moment into the glorious times ahead. Meanwhile, the joyful anticipation deepens. All around us, we observe a pregnant creation. The difficult times of pain throughout the world are simply birth pangs. But it's not only around us. It's within us. The Spirit of God is arousing us within. We're also feeling the birth pangs. These sterile and barren bodies of ours are yearning for full deliverance. That is why waiting does not diminish us. Any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. We are enlarged in the waiting. We, of course, don't see what is enlarging us. But the longer we wait, the larger we become and the more joyful our expectancy. This resurrection life isn't timid grave tending. It's adventurously expectant. What wonderful words to describe that the Jesus rising from the dead changes everything. It changes our expectation of life. It changes it all. Life coaches love to ask what if questions. What if, and then it causes us to look at wider horizons. One of their favourite questions is what if fear wasn't a factor? What if fear wasn't holding you back from doing the things that you dream of? That's the reality for the New Testament Christians, the early church, the followers of Jesus, that fear had gone. In one of the letters in the New Testament, the writer writes this, Only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Many people live their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. But Jesus' resurrection sets us free from that fear of dying. Many years ago, my job was to run youth camps for teenagers. And uh, every holidays, we would gather these guys. And the same ones would come each year, and I'd stay in touch with them. I got to know them really well. And part of the week, as well as the activities, was to do Bible studies. Getting a bunch of 16-year-old boys to sit down, settle, calm down, and study the Bible isn't the easiest task. But we had a lot of fun. But I had one of the boys I knew well, was a guy called Simon. 
Simon has cystic fibrosis. He was sporty, he was active, he was funny, he was a lovely, lovely boy. But his cystic fibrosis meant that he had extensive period of time in hospital and his life expectancy was shorter. I remember studying the passage Kate has just read to us from Romans 8 with this group of boys and they were in a playful mood and they were looking at it and trying to get what it meant. And then Simon talked about verses 18 and 19 and he said, these are my favourite verses in the Bible. I do not consider the present sufferings anything compared to the life that's to come. Age 16, in the midst of a playful, joyful, slightly flippant bunch of teenage boys, this one lad talked about even though he went through suffering, he knew that what was to come was greater. Over the last few weeks I've had the privilege of talking to people who know that there's a real danger of the coronavirus, that maybe they face death. Maybe for all of us the reality of this virus sweeping through the land, the daily statistics of people dying, makes us realise that death is a reality. And I've been inspired as I've talked to people who said, I'm not afraid of death. I've got to go at some stage and I know I'm going to something better. But for many of us the fear of death is a something that holds us back. Now, don't misunderstand me here. Our survival instinct, our desire to stay alive is a good thing. We don't foolhardily run towards death. Being unafraid of death doesn't make us uh, stupid or dangerous to others. But we recognise that death is a reality. It's a reality for all of us. We hope and pray for many, many years to come for all of us. We hope and pray that, that we stand against COVID and we keep each other safe. But Death is a reality and maybe this current season is a time when we're thinking more about death. We're more aware of death. What does it mean to live free from the fear of death? Free from being a slave to the fear of death? Why are Christians not afraid of death? We're not afraid of death because we know something better is on the other side. That there is life beyond death. Just as Simon did, just as those I've spoken to recently. Romans 8 talks about creation longing and waiting in expectation for the fullness of God's plans to come about. And it uses this phrase of pregnancy, all of creation pregnant. Pregnancy, of course I've not been through it but I've walked closely with my wife through it. And it's uncomfortable, it's difficult, it's painful. Childbirth is agonising and yet it's possible because we know what is to come. And in Romans 8, Paul uses that of things swelling and growing towards the full expectation. So as Christians, we have this hope and this joy that we are not afraid of death. How can we be sure? We can be sure because Jesus rose again. Because we know that this is historical fact, that he died and rose again. In the port of Lisbon, where I was a few weeks ago, right there on the um, west coast of Portugal, the place where Columbus set sail from out across the ocean to discover America, on that great seafaring city. At the end of the furthest harbour wall, on the furthest western reach of the city, there was in the medieval times a big sign written in Latin which said, Ne plus ultra. There is no more than this. When Columbus went to America and came back, the story goes that someone went to that sign and they crossed out the ne and it said plus ultra, there is more. Someone had gone beyond and found that there is not an end, there is more, just as Jesus did as he rose from the dead. So one of the joys of following Jesus is you can have that certainty that there is more after death, that death is not the end. The present sufferings are real, but fear is defeated, and today is a celebration. And I want to say to you, if you don't know that certainty in your life, you can have that certainty and celebration. Easter Sunday can be more than chocolate and bunnies for you. It can be a wonderful experience of knowing that death is not to be feared. This is a free gift given to us by God. How do we receive that free gift? Again, many years ago, when I myself was a teenager, I remember hearing someone describe how we as humans walk away from God. We walk away from Him, turn our back on Him and say, I don't want to know you. And then there's a moment where we choose to turn round and turn towards Him, back into relationship. And as we do so, God welcomes us. Jesus told the story of the prodigal son, the boy who ran away from his father but then came home and found his father there, arms open to welcome him and embrace him. God wants to welcome you home. 
I mentioned earlier baptisms. We would normally be having baptisms today. These are great celebrations and in our baptisms we, we use very old vows, vows that have been used for 20 centuries. The first part of the vows is I turn away from evil. I turn away from the work of darkness. I turn away from sin, the things that are dishonouring to God, and I turn to Christ. I choose Christ. I choose to follow him as Lord. I choose to let him be Lord. The Bible tells us when we do this, we are offered free gift of life, of eternal life. And the fear of death no longer has a grip on us. We are no longer slaves. So you may be watching this at home and you've never made that choice, never made that decision that actually you want to turn to Christ and you want to know what it means to live resurrection life, a life of adventurous expectation, a life not of timid graveside fear, but hope and expectation, the life that many others have experienced. In a minute, I'm going to pray through those baptism vows. And as I do that, if you, you want to echo them in your heart today, in your own home, and then maybe in the future you want to say them publicly to others, then that would be great. If you want to explore this more, we're going to be running an Alpha course online. Our curate Will is going to be running that. Email will at stchadsromley.co.uk or check out our Facebook page for more details. But maybe today you just say, actually, I don't want to be afraid of dying. I want to have an eternity with God. So pray these baptism vows with me. Do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth and the life? I come to Christ. Amen. So we're going to come to a time of praying together and I'm going to invite you in your homes together to just pray. And we're going to pray for our community, we're going to pray for each other, uh, we're going to pray for this world, we're going to pray for the church, we're going to pray for those that are ill at this time and we're also going to pray for those people on the front line, particularly in the NHS at the moment. And so the first thing that we're going to pray for, and we're going to do it as five separate prayers. So it might be that you want to just maybe place your finger on your thumb or pray together. And the first thing we're going to pray for are those people that are ill with COVID-19. We're going to pray that God would heal them. And so let's pray together for that. Dear Lord, we pray for all those that are, that are ill at this time. We pray for those that are suffering with COVID-19. We pray for your healing touch upon them. You are the God that heals and we ask, would you heal now? In a moment of silence, just thinking of those that we know specifically that are ill at this time, we lift them to you. And Lord, we pray for anyone else that may be ill through other things. God, would you heal? In the name of Jesus. Amen. The second thing we're going to pray for is for our frontline workers, the, those particularly in the NHS at the moment, but all other key workers as well. And so for the second point, that's what we're going to pray for. So again, it might help to just maybe put your hand, hold, your, hold your first finger. Um, so this is our second prayer together. God, we thank you for all those on the front line. We thank you for the NHS and all those people that we know that are working so hard. God, would you protect them and would you keep them? Would you give them strength that is just almost supernatural just in you? When they feel weak, would they be strong in you? God, would you work through them? And would you bless them? And would you look after their families and bless each of them now? Amen. Okay, the third thing that we're going to pray for is we're going to pray for businesses, actually, because there's a lot of people and a lot of businesses that are going to struggle financially because of COVID-19 and a lot of people um, who will lose their jobs, very sadly. And so we're going to pray for them quite specifically. So, ready? Let's go. 
God, we pray for all businesses uh, in this country. We pray for the small businesses, uh, for independent businesses. We pray for all those that fear losing their jobs and for those people that already have lost their job. We pray for your comfort, for your provision and your blessing upon them. Amen. And now we're going to pray for Romley, quite specifically. Um, within this prayer as well, um, praying that people would know Jesus and know his peace and know his comfort and know his love at this time and certainly on this Easter Sunday. So let's pray together. God, we thank you for this town that we live in. We thank you for Romley. We thank you for its people. We thank you for its just tremendous sense of community. And we ask at this time, as people pull together in community, would people come to know you? They maybe don't already know you. Would they know your love? Would they know uh, your blessing? Would they know your grace? Would you bless this community of Romley? In Jesus' name, amen. And then lastly, we're going to pray for the world because we know that coronavirus isn't just something that is affecting our country, but it's affecting people all over the world. And so we're going to pray for, well, basically pray for the whole world. And it may be that actually you know people in other parts of the world that you want to pray specifically for at this time. And that's okay too. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we lift up this world to you, your creation. We pray for those in uh, third world countries. We pray for those in poverty or uh, war stricken areas. We pray for those that are going to struggle to access medical care with coronavirus. We ask for your healing and your comfort and your provision. We cry out to you and ask, Lord, would you do just something incredible? Would you do a miracle in the name of Jesus? We pray against the spread of coronavirus around this world. And we stand together united in that prayer, that prayer of petition. We ask God, would you move? Would you come against this spread? In the name of Jesus. Amen. And forever he is glorified. Forever he is lifted high. Forever he is risen. He is alive. He is alive. The moon and stars were wet. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross. His blood poured out for us. The way to every curse upon him. The final breath he gave is heaven looked away. The Son of God was made. Darkness, a battle in the grave, the war on death was waged, the power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake, the stone was rolled away, his perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated. Forever He is glorified. Forever He is lifted high. 
It gives me great pleasure to tell you about something that we're going to be running as a church at St. Chad's. We're going to be launching the Alpha course in the next couple of weeks, but it's going to be an Alpha course different than any other Alpha course we've done before. You see, Alpha in the past has always been about gathering together for a meal first and then sharing in group discussions after we watch videos. Now, obviously, we can't gather physically in the same way. And so this Alpha course is going to be done online where we will share the videos with the group in the week before and then we'll get together, we'll arrange a meeting time where people can gather online and we can discuss uh, those big questions about life and death and faith. You see, this time of coronavirus, I realise and many realise that there are big questions about life and death and faith and where does it all fit? And so the Alpha Course provides an incredible opportunity to just encourage people to engage with those questions. I'm going to just play a short intro video of the Alpha Course now so you can get a taste of what it's like. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? I 
had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with, is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, uh, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. Yeah, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, we'd be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. Like, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. And so that's the Alpha course. We invite you to come along to join in. And if you are interested in signing up to do the Alpha course, if you haven't done it before and you'd like to do it, then you can email me at will at stchadsromley.co.uk. Um, maybe you know someone who might enjoy doing the Alpha course. Whilst we're in lockdown, we realize that there are limited things that we can do by actually watching a video and engaging in a bit of discussion about it afterwards. Maybe that's something that we could do together. Maybe that's something that we could use this time to explore. And so I invite you, and I invite you to invite your friends, anyone you know that might be interested, uh, to sign up for Alpha this year online for St. Chad's. Again, if you want more information, or if you want to contact me to sign up, then just email me. And so that brings us to the end of our service this morning. Uh, we hope that whatever you are up to today, that you will have just the most blessed day. We wish you all a happy Easter as we go from here this morning, just remembering the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, this Easter Sunday, of life and of hope. And so I want to pray a prayer of blessing upon each of you now, and you may wish to... Uh, reach your hand out to someone who's with you, or you may just wish to hold your hands out in front of you as that physical posture as I pray for a blessing for you. May God bless you. May he keep you. May this day be filled with joy wherever you are and whatever you are doing. And may his peace that transcends all understanding rest in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you this day, this special Easter day, and always. Amen. After this, we're going to be uh, joining for a Facebook live chat at 12pm, and there will be Katie, Richard and I on there. So if you're around for that and you want to get on Facebook live, then we'd love to catch up with you on there. Have a fantastic week.